Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can add video, sound, and flash SWF files to a PDF document using Acrobat. Acrobat supports MLV, MP3, SWF, and other media file types encoded with the H.264 codec. To add a media file to a PDF, first select the Rich Media Tool within the Tool Center. The Rich Media view then appears. Notice that the Rich Media Toolbar provides three buttons labeled Add Sound, Add SWF, and Add Video. The button you choose depends on the type of media you want to insert. When you click one of these three buttons, the cursor turns into a crosshair tool and you can click and drag to define the area of the page where you want to place the media. When you let go of the mouse button, either the Insert Video, Insert Sound, or Insert SWF dialog box opens depending on which tool you selected. You use this dialog box to select the media to play and set its playback parameters. For example, click the Add Video button. The Insert Video dialog box then appears on screen. You can enter a URL directly into the file field shown to play an online video. To insert a locally stored media file, instead click the Browse button to open the Select a File dialog box to find the media to add. When you find it, click it to select it and click the Open button in the Select a File dialog box. The name and pathway of the local media file then appears in the file field. For video and SWF files only, if the Snap to Content Proportions checkbox in the dialog box is checked, then the playback area will retain the height and width ratio of the selected video for clearer video playback. You can click the Show Advanced Options checkbox to expand the dialog box and display additional tabs of settings in the area at the bottom of the dialog box. The tabs shown in the settings available will vary based on the type of media you are inserting. For all media, you can click the Launch Settings tab. In the Activation Settings section, use the Enable When drop-down to select the event that should trigger the activation of the content. Use the Disable When drop-down to choose what event should disable the content. Use the Playback Style drop-down to select the desired method of playback. The selected file's width and height appear within the Width and Height fields. In the Appearance section, use the Border Width drop-down to select a desired border width for the playback. For SWF files only, you can check the Transparent Background checkbox to enable a transparent background for the file. In the Poster Image section, select an option button to choose the poster image to display when the content is not playing. If there is a poster image already selected, you can choose the Keep Current Poster option button. You can select the Retrieve Poster from Media option to select a poster image from the media file selected. To manually choose a poster image, choose the Create Poster from File option and then click the Browse button to open a Select Poster Art dialog box. Navigate to the image to use as the poster image, click it to select it, and then click the Open button in the Select Poster Art dialog box. For video files only, you can click the Controls tab to change settings related to the video playback controls. In the Playback Controls section, use the Skin drop-down to select the desired playback control skin to use. This determines which buttons appear in the video playback controls. You can click the Color box and then choose a skin color from the drop-down menu to change the color of the playback controls. You can change the opacity of the playback controls that appear over the video by entering the desired opacity level into the Opacity field. To have the playback controls automatically hide when the user is not actively placing the mouse over the video file, check the Auto Hide Controls checkbox. On the Video tab, for some types of videos, you can view chapter points. You can select a chapter point and then click the Actions button on this tab to apply actions at selected chapter points. For SWF files only, you can click the SWF tab to add flash vars, which are flash variables that add action script variables for the selected SWF file into the flash vars field. If your SWF file has a custom right-click context menu, you can check the Pass Context Menu Click to SWF checkbox to show that menu when a user right-clicks the file in the PDF. You can click the Resources tab to list the files required for the SWF file to function. You can click the Add button to add individual files, or click the Add Directory button to add all files in a folder you select. The files then appear in the list below. You can click an entry in this list and rename it by typing a name in the Properties field if needed to ensure that scripts run correctly. You can also click the Remove button to remove a selected resource.
When you have finished setting any advanced options for your selected media file, click the OK button to insert it into the PDF. You can then preview the file within the PDF to ensure it is working. Be aware that you will need to have the correct version of the related video player for your selected video file type installed on your computer to play the content after adding it to the PDF. Users who also view this PDF will also need to have the related video player for the selected video file type installed to play the content within the PDF. To edit or delete a media file in the PDF, click the Select Object tool within the Rich Media taskbar. To edit the media, double-click the media file to open the associated Edit Video, Edit Sound, or Edit SWF dialog box where you can then change the same option shown when adding the media file. To delete the media file, click the Select Object button if needed, then click the media file to select it in the PDF, and then press the Delete key on your keyboard. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.